Uh, today we are going to uh, going to discuss uh, something about normal subgroups. In the last few lectures, uh, we talked about cosets and uh, properties, and then we we have seen that uh, every coset that uh, a, uh, a coset need not be subgroup. Okay, a coset need not be a subgroup. Not be a subgroup. And then we uh, came to know what are the conditions under which a coset becomes a subgroup. Fine. And then uh, we talked about uh, <clears throat> uh, the talk about this conditions when uh, two left or right cosets are equal. And uh, also we have uh, uh, a property like uh, when two right or left cosets either they are uh, they are completely disjoint or they are uh, same exactly same okay and in the last lecture we talked about the product of uh, subgroups so in we took uh, h and k there are two subgroups if there are two subgroups then we can define h times k uh, as a collection of uh, a collection of elements of the form small h and times k uh, h belongs to capital H and k belongs to capital K. And then we proved that uh, this H k becomes a subgroup. This becomes a subgroup of G uh, if and only if H k equals to K H. OK. So one thing is very much clear that uh, when we are taking some element from here, suppose uh, H and K, then there should be some element uh, here. Uh, <clears throat> uh, something K1 or uh, H1, OK? Uh, they should not be exactly same. But in case of abelian group, uh, in case of abelian group, this is uh, very much possible, abelian or cyclic group, because every cyclic group group is abelian but for other uh, non abelian groups so we need to we need to understand this that if you are taking some element uh, of the form hk then there uh, and this is equals to ks then uh, there should be some k1 and h1 such that their product equals uh, h and k okay so this is these are the things we discussed yesterday and also in between we talked about Lagrange's theorem. <clears throat> What's, uh, what Lagrange's theorem says? Uh, Lagrange's theorem. Lagrange's theorem says that uh, if H is a subgroup of, of G, then this would imply that uh, order of H should divide order of G. OK, so for example, but uh, converse of Lagrange's theorem is not true that we know okay so for example if uh, the group g has order uh, 3 to 3 so this can be written 17 times uh, 17 times 19 so possible possible uh, possible order of orders of subgroups subgroups of g are what are they 1, 17, 19, and 3, 2, 3. Okay. So these two are very much possible because identity, this is only singleton, and this is complete uh, whole group G. But we are not sure about these two, whether there are some or we don't have any. Okay. Subgroup of that order. And converse of Lagrange's theorem is not true. <clears throat> converse of Lagrange's theorem uh, not true in general. OK, so what are what examples we considered for this? The group of uh, uh, <clears throat> event permutations and order of this is 12. Fine. So divisors of uh, 12 are 1, 2, uh, 3, 4 and 
then we have 6 and 12. OK, so if you are talking about uh, order and then uh, number of uh, subgroups. Of uh, A4, so one order, one subgroup and then we have a, a two order. There are three subgroup and we have a three order, then four order, then six order and then 12 order. So there are uh, four, uh, three subgroup of order two. One subgroup of order one, two subgroup of order. Uh, three subgroup of order two and uh, four subgroup of order three. Four subgroups of order three and uh, one subgroup of order four. And there is uh, zero subgroup of order six and uh, there is one subgroup of order twelve. So this can, you can verify because uh, you, you, may, you may list down uh, all event permutation in A4. Uh, of course, A4 contains only event permutations. So all members you can note down and then you can uh, uh, construct a group. So identity element will give you one subgroup and then complete A4 will give you another subgroup. And then you won't be getting any subgroup of order six. That is uh, there is zero number of subgroup of order six. But for other divisors, except this six, you will be having a subgroup. So this support uh, the converse of Lagrange's theorem is not true. OK. <clears throat> so uh, OK. So let us. Uh, so what uh, what we saw that uh, if you're talking about the post set, suppose for example, uh, if you have Z, then Z uh, under addition, then subgroup uh, its subgroup are of the form of this form N Z, where N belongs to set of natural number. Okay, fine. So they are the subgroups of uh, Z N, but uh, when we talk about the coset, we used right hot. So first of all, for coset, we need to have a subgroup. Okay, so H is a subgroup of G. Then we use write like this. This this is a coset, and you know the coset need not be a subgroup. So A H is a coset only. So and because we are considering here the group under multiplication, so have we have written A H. If the group is under addition, then we need to write like this. Okay. So here, for example, five Z is a subgroup of Z. You know already it. Okay. Uh, so we <coughs> sorry. <coughs> so we can talk about one plus z because one belongs to one plus five z. Okay, one plus five z, two plus uh, two plus five z, three plus five z, and then four plus five z. If you if you write five plus five z, it, it means uh, you are talking about z only. You are talking about 5z only, OK? Because this contains the uh, <coughs> 5z contains all multiples of uh, 5. OK, and then uh, 1 plus 5z, it means you are adding in a, all multiple of 5 uh, element 1, OK? That is the number 1. And then here you are uh, adding 2 to each element of 5z. Here you are adding 3 to each elements of 5z. In fact, if you're talking about 5z, it means that uh, we are talking about we are considering those elements uh, when we are dividing with uh, when we are dividing with 5, they are leaving remainder 0. And when we are writing 1 plus 5z, it means uh, we are talking about uh, elements which are. Uh, in fact, let, let us write here 5, OK. 5 and n, 5 n, 5 n. Uh, just a minute. Five n and five n plus one n belongs to the set of integers. Okay, so here uh, when we are, we are dividing this element, we are uh, getting one as remainder. Okay, similarly we can continue, but after four plus five z, you will be getting again five z. So it will continue. Fine. 
So this will partition Z as uh, you can take any set uh, subgroup of Z and then uh, you can write down other uh, cosets, other disjoint cosets. So disjoint what you, you can see that uh, there is not there will be nothing. You, you won't be getting anything common here. OK, in all these cosets. So one plus five Z. Uh, just a minute. Uh, let this is union, OK, this is union. And then union 2 plus 5Z and 3 plus 5Z and then <coughs> 4 plus 5Z. So these uh, things we, we used while proving Lagrange's theorem also. And you have seen that uh, when there are distinct, we are considering distinct uh, left or right cosets, they partition the group itself with the help of cosets and that particular subgroup okay so this is a subgroup this is subgroup but all these are cosets okay all these are cosets <clears throat> so <clears throat> okay fine so I hope you, you got uh, what uh, I wanted to make it clear. So now it is time to discuss what is uh, what we mean by normal subgroup. OK. <clears throat> so until now we talked about uh, so, uh, cosets and some properties and how they partition a given a given group or set. Fine. So we know that uh, any subgroup uh, or any coset in general, suppose H is a subgroup of G, okay, and A belongs to G, then uh, A H need not be equals to always H A, okay. But we also talked about H K as if we, H and K are two subgroups of a group G, then uh, H K is not also necessarily a subgroup of G, but when H K equals to K H, it becomes a subgroup, then H becomes HK becomes a subgroup of G. So one thing is natural to expect that uh, if at all I want to make this H A H or something A H to be a subgroup of G, then uh, we should have something similar condition like this. OK, and that uh, I think you have proved that uh, this is when uh, this <coughs> becomes a subgroup. OK. But thing is that uh, here we are going to give uh, <clears throat> here we are going to give a uh, another definition by including that condition and that uh, subgroup is called a normal subgroup. OK, so the condition when uh, a, a coset becomes a subgroup. Thing is that 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 we will be using. OK, so let let uh, H be a subgroup. Subgroup of G. Uh, and A belongs to G. We say that. Uh, H is a normal subgroup. of G if A H equals to H A for all A belongs to G. We denote this by or we write this H is a normal subgroup of G like this. Okay this uh, triangle kind of thing and this uh, vertex uh, heading towards left. Right. <clears throat> you should note that. Uh, so note that uh, a h a h equals to h a. What is meaning of this one? As I'm telling you many times means. For uh, a h belongs to. A H 
there exists some H dash belongs to H such that a H equals to uh, H dash A. So this you should remember. Okay. So now uh, actually there are so many definition you will be getting uh, for normal subgroup. Okay. But this is uh, one of the simplest one because it is very easy to use. Okay. Other definitions sometimes uh, uh, some other uh, authors or other authors uh, or you, you may get in some books that uh, X A H X inverse equals to H. This is for uh, definition of a normal subgroup. OK. And also you sometimes you may get like this. OK, so these are so many things. There are so many things you you may be seeing, but uh, someone if if someone using this as a definition or this as a definition, then using these uh, they are going to prove this one. What we have used as a uh, as a, a definition, OK? So what others use as a definition, now we are going to prove them, those results, OK? So there is a result uh, theorem. This is a 5 point, uh, I think 9.1, OK? So uh, theorem says that uh, let uh, H is a subgroup of G, I am writing in more symbolic way, OK? Not in uh, so many statements. Let then. H is normal in G if and only if. X H X inverse containing H. So this is the condition, OK? Other uh, implication also holds that uh, I will tell you how some sometimes uh, some author use like this. OK, this is equals to H. Fine, so that uh, I will tell you how. for this to prove this one. Uh, how you are I we need to prove this one only to prove this one. We need to also prove uh, another other uh, uh, inclusion like uh, X H X inverse. OK, <clears throat> so let us. Uh, uh, see how we can prove this one. So let us assume that let H is normal in G. Then. Uh, by definition. A H equals to. H A for all A belongs to G, OK? So these things we have been given that uh, by, by by assumption S is normal G and then by definition we have this. So now we will use this to prove uh, this inclusion. Fine. <clears throat> uh, let X belongs X is any arbitrary element in uh, G and uh, H belongs to H. Then X times H equals to H dash X for some H prime or H dash belongs to capital S. All right. And this would imply that X H X inverse equals to H dash. This belongs to H. So every element of this form is in is equals to H dash and H dash is a member of this so whenever we are taking some element, some element in uh, uh, here of this form, and this belongs to you know, this belongs to which set X, H, and X inverse. So once we have this element, so this belongs to uh, this element belongs to here, okay, and the same element is also a member of, of H. So this could imply that. Uh, X H X inverse contained in H. OK, so this completes the proof uh, of first part. Conversely. Let. X H X inverse contained in H. 
for all x belongs to uh, g fine so now we are considering this and we will proving that uh, uh, h is normal is a normal subgroup of g for that we need to prove what we need to now claim that uh, h is normal h is a normal normal subgroup of g that is to prove this what we need to prove a h equals to h a for all a belongs to g okay so by assumption uh, here we have x h x inverse uh, this contained in h okay so take x equals to a so we have x a h a inverse contained in h so this would imply that a h is contained in uh, h a h a uh, just simply we need to operate uh, in the right by a so we have this one so let us uh, let us uh, uh, denote it by star and then again uh, we can let uh, x equals to a inverse then a inverse like this and this contained in h okay so this would imply that uh, a inverse h and a is contained in h and in a similar way we can write a h a is contained in a h so this is star dash so from star and star dash we have a h equals to h a so this completes the proof other inclusion sometimes uh, i just told you that uh, 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 other people used to write uh, uh, x h x inverse equals to h okay so for this we need to prove like this okay so this we can note it down okay or we can write as remark Just do it. I don't know. <clears throat> uh, just wait. Where the page is going? is coming okay but not coming exact on exact place uh, let me think we are let us be here So we have like this. Uh, then uh, let us see how. Uh, uh, let's make a note for this. H is contained in uh, x h x inverse. Okay, so that uh, both uh, would imply that uh, x h inverse h uh, x inverse equals to h. Okay, so this also will come. So for this, uh, if we take uh, x belongs to h g, x belongs to g and uh, h belongs to h so x h x inverse equals to we can write uh, x inverse uh, g sorry h and then uh, x inverse inverse of this and this content in h you know because we have already proved that x h x inverse containing h that we have proved already okay so because x is also a member of g and this is true <coughs> this is true for all x uh, belongs to 
g so this this should hold okay so now h equals to uh, x and then we have x inverse this quantity this quantity x inverse h and then uh, x because inverse of uh, x inverse is x and then we have x inverse now this is uh, this is this content in h so this is of the form some x h and x inverse okay so this would be contained in x uh, h and x inverse fine uh, as uh, x h x inverse contained in h so what we have h contained in x h and x inverse okay. so from above theorem and uh, using this we have uh, x h x inverse equals to h okay that is uh, uh, h is normal subgroup h is normal subgroup of g if and only if x h x inverse equals to h for all x be belongs to g okay uh, so we have these uh, now uh, so there are some properties like uh, when we can say that a group is normal and what is the property of normal subgroups okay is there anything uh, because normal subgroup normal uh, the the cosets which becomes normal subgroup in fact uh, not the coset but uh, a subgroup which becomes normal subgroup for the this a h equals to h a this holds for all a belongs to g okay so if you have two a h and then b h then what about the uh, product of a h and b h okay so next uh, uh, result this is small result this will talk about uh, 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 this uh, composition so next result is this says that uh, uh, if H is normal in G, then A H and then uh, A H and uh, B H, the product of these two, or in case of additive group, you have to write uh, sum of these two is equals to A H A B H. Okay, that is the product of two left coset becomes again a left coset okay similarly you can write h a and h b equals to h a b okay these two holes so let us uh, let this be first this be second proof so let uh, of course this is given that h is in n is uh, h is uh, normal in g okay then we have a h equals to uh, h a for all a belongs to g fine so consider uh, consider uh, we can take a h a okay a h and then b h so a h uh, equals to h a we can write like this h a and then we have here b h okay so since h is normal in g and a b are elements of uh, g so what we can write we can write a b h and then h so this is equals to a b h so product of two left coset again a left coset now uh, the second part we can take uh, h a and then h b so this is equals to uh, a i think uh, what we have taken uh, product of two left coset is okay product of right coset we are going to take so for this we need to write h a and then uh, we can write this b h so this is equals to h a b and then h 
and this is equals to a b h and h so this is equals to a i think i did some is uh is the right line this not this so h and then h a b so h a b we have so this completes the proof so product of two left coset is a left coset and right coset is a right coset okay now there are some example let us see what example are there uh, every subgroup uh, that is they are talking about uh, every subgroup of a billion group every subgroup of an abelian group is in is a normal subgroup okay so this you can do very easily that is absolutely no problem because uh, they are talking about a h equals to h a for all a belongs to g so when group is abelian group is abelian then uh, every element of g should commute with other elements of g also fine so this is a very this is a true naturally so in case of if you are replacing this abelian group by cyclic group then uh, this result will be true so i'm leaving this uh, as a uh, practice question you can do uh, the second question center of uh, a group that is zd is a always normal in g you know that uh, center of g is also a abelian group okay and uh, once you prove this one you have uh, the proof of this also uh, for example if you want to prove this so you know that uh, uh, z is a subgroup z is a uh, subgroup of uh, that is zg is a subgroup of g zg zg is a subgroup of g that you know now you need to prove that this is what this is a normal to prove normal you need to prove a and then zg equals to zg a for all a belongs to uh, for all a belongs to g okay so this is obvious because the center of uh, zg contains all those element of elements of g which commutes with other elements of g Okay, this contains only those element. Fine. So this is uh, uh, you can prove this one. This is only single one, two line state to, to proof. Uh, you can write for this. Yeah, this is important. A n uh, is normal in G. A n is normal in S n. Sorry, a n is normal in S n. Uh, so this uh, you can uh, you can practice nicely. And leaving these uh, two, three things you can do. And the fourth example also every subgroup DN consisting of solely the rotations is normal in DN. OK, so DN if H contains only rotation, then this is normal in DN for all N. And this example number five, I have already we have already discussed yesterday that uh, when hk becomes a uh, subgroup okay hk becomes when hk becomes subgroup of g and you know that this becomes subgroup of g if and only if hk equals to kh this itself implies that h a equals to uh, h a h equals to h a for all a belongs to g okay this is a <clears throat> But uh, a little bit uh, you can take it out because uh, you know uh, this is a subgroup. OK, fine. But now we need to prove what you need to prove. This is a normal subgroup. OK, so to prove that this is a normal subgroup. So you can prove uh, that here they are talking HB a normal subgroup of G and G and K B any subgroup of G. OK, then OK, then they are talking about uh, when H K becomes subgroup. OK. So we, we proved this one yesterday. So this is uh, another translation of what is written here. OK. So uh, you know that uh, if this holds, if this holds, it, uh, uh, it means that. Uh, 
uh, sorry. It means that there is some element H here uh, such that uh, H dash times A H equals to H dash times A. Fine. So now if H is a normal subgroup, then this should hold. OK, normal subgroup of G and K be any subgroup of G. OK, H is normal in G, H is normal in G and K is any subgroup of G. Then they are telling that H and uh, H uh, K, H K is a subgroup of G. This implies. OK, so of course uh, to prove the, H, the H K is a subgroup, you need to you can use a one step test or two step test. OK, so this is and this is uh, similar to what we uh, what technique we used to prove yesterday. This is statement. OK. Uh, I'll tell you some more thing. You, a normal, a, a general question you may ask that, uh, sir, when a HK becomes normal? Because in this statement, uh, HK is a subgroup of G. This is the conclusion. But one may ask, sir, what is the condition? What other or extra condition we need to impose on HK so that it becomes a normal subgroup of G? Okay. Example number six, uh, you can see uh, that uh, in D8, they are considering only rotations. Okay. And then uh, they are uh, taking K also as a one rotation, one reflection. Okay. Then HK, they are defining HK as a collection of these many elements, is a subgroup of this. So this is a uh, this is a practical demonstration of uh, example number five. So this is abstract sense. This is an example on this example number five. OK, uh, let me tell you one more interesting result. What? Uh, uh, what we can have. We have seen that uh, in the last uh, example number five. Uh, if uh, H H is normal in G and uh, K is a subgroup of G, then this would imply that H K is a subgroup of G. So this we proved. Second, uh, the question was that when H K becomes normal in G, is a simple subgroup when it becomes normal subgroup. So question is so uh, natural one may naturally one may think that uh, what about if we uh, take a K also as a normal subgroup. So if H is normal in G and K is also normal in G, then this would imply that H K, the product uh, uh, I told you yesterday, okay, how we can define H K is also normal in G. Fine. So if H K H normal in G and K is normal in G, then HK is normal in G. Subgroup, you have proved this here. Oh, OK, so you can uh, prove that when HK is normal in G. So I'm leaving this also as a practice question for you. OK, so to prove that HK is normal in G, what do you need to prove? From here, what you are getting that H A H equals to H A. And from here, what you are getting? some bk equals to kb fine so to prove that hk is normal in g of course you know that this is a subgroup so we don't need to prove again and again this is a subgroup so what we need to prove a h k equals to uh, h k a for all a belongs to g so this is this is what we need to prove. Hmm? So how we can uh, prove this one? You can start with the, from left side H K H K, and because H is normal in G, so we can write H A and then uh, K, and then K is normal in G also. So how we can write H K A? OK, that is H, K and A. And this is true for all A belongs to G. So this completes the proof, single line proof. 
but result is interesting. So can you can you think uh, more general thing here? Suppose you have a H I and they are normal in G and I number in number finite number one, two, three and up to suppose two, zero, two, one. OK, so uh, can you say that uh, H product of H I I from one to two, zero, two, one is normal in G? So this is the question. So any idea about uh, the conclusion? Hello, will it be true or what? Hello. Hello. Thank you for watching this video. To stay updated, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Cosmos Learning. Happy learning through Cosmos Learning. To watch more, click on any of these cards. Thank you once again.